Hello everyone, I'm Wei Xin Chang from the University of Hong Kong. Today I will present our work, UBF, an extensible and expressive visitor framework for programming language reuse. This is a joint work with Bruno Oliveira. So the motivation behind this work is that new programming languages and DSLs are needed and the existing programming languages are evolving all the time. However, it is hard to creating and maintaining a PL because there is a lot of implementation effort and expert knowledge involved in the process of designing syntax, semantics, and implementing the tools. Um, an observation is that programming languages share a lot of features. Nearly all programming languages have mechanisms to do variable decoration, to do arithmetic operations, and so on. And, but it is hard to uh, materialize this kind of conceptual reuse into software engineering reuse. The idea is to have language components. So suppose there is a bunch of um, components available in the library. So to construct your own PL, you just choose uh, appropriate components you want, and there is some semantics predefined in each component, such as evaluation and printing. And you just choose such as arithmetics or lambdas and combine them together to form a language. Of course, if the existing components do not fit your need, you add your new syntax and semantics. So the idea is to compose the language components and with high reusability and high uh, extensibility to reduce the effort of change and instead of creating everything from scratch. So the uh, uh, natural problem arises is that how to reuse these components. A naive and simplest way is to just copy and paste code, but this uh, leads to code duplication and it's hard to synchronize changes on the original components to the uh, actual implementation that uses this uh, code. A more appropriate way is to have some form of synthetic modularity which allows you to define these components separately in different files and use some mechanism of textual composition to form the total uh, implementation. But a more appropriate way is to have uh, semantic modularity which supports uh, separate compilation and modular type checking. So this is uh, an old problem which it's called the expression problem by Philip Wadler in 1998. It's actually a, an older problem with a very uh, nice name. So there are many solutions that try to solve this problem. Among them is called object algebras, which was proposed in 2012 in ECOOP by Oliver Ryan Cook, which are a solution in, uh, that work in Java-like languages with uh, simple generics. But solving the expression problem is just one step forward. So there are many practical issues uh, still not solved. For example, uh, the object algebras for a programming style similar to church encoding or functional programming fold, which lacks of control and it's hard to deal with uh, dependencies. And afterwards, there are some workarounds that try to solve this uh, limitations such as uh, Ecoops 2013 and UPSA 14 that uses uh, Scala's intersection types and merge uh, operator to solve the complexity. Or, but these solutions are quite uh, complex or penalized in performance and requires these features not available in Java. So our uh, contributions are a new approach to modular external visitors which allows modular dependent operations to be defined, generalized uh, queries and transformation that do not suffer from the bottom-up nature of object algebras, and it generates code uh, for boilerplate, and there's an implementation and case study. Okay, to begin with uh, the encoding, I want to give a review on object algebras, internal visitors, and external visitors. So, Let's consider modeling a simple arithmetic language which consists of only uh, integer literals and additions. The left-hand side is how we model it using internal visitors or object algebras. We have a 
our interface, which contains two visit methods called dates and add, and we capture the recursive occurrence of E using a type parameter, and this is so-called a visitor terminology using the gun of four book, and we have an exp interface that contains the accept method. We have two classes, data add, that implements this interface, and we can implement an operation over this simple arithmetic language. For example, evaluation by instantiating the type parameter E as an integer and gives the two uh, cases accordingly. So the, the advantage of the visit pattern is that you can re-implement in this LG interface and you can support multiple operations. So the right-hand side is the external visitor implementation. So the differences are highlighted in yellow. So the differences are uh, we capture the uh, E using a concrete uh, type, E exp, whereas the uh, in internal visitors, we use a type parameter. And another bigger difference is how we control accept calls. In internal visitors, we call accept uh, inside the classes, delete and add, such as these concrete elements. And in external visitors, we control the uh, accept call in concrete visitors. And object attributes are just uh, bypass the concrete element and element hierarchy. So there are limitations uh, in the visitor pattern. Uh, for example, in internal visitors, uh, you, when you want to extend the language with two new constructs, such as subtraction or ex if expression, you can easily extend the interface with two new visit methods and extend existing evaluation operation with uh, the definitions for these two new cases. However, this is modular, but wrong. Why? Because we eagerly evaluate the two branches. This is wrong because when we have some side effects, the result will be out of expect. So we do the similar extension for the uh, external visitors. The problem is we have to define a separate visitor interface that's uh, with a separate uh, as, uh, element interface because these two are tightly coupled. We cannot reuse them. Then we have to copy and paste existing code uh, in the uh, evaluation operation for the uh, smaller language in, inside the larger evaluation. So it is now correct because we control the uh, traversal on the sub-expressions explicitly using accept, but we duplicate the code. So the ideal solution is to support both modularity and traversal control. So let's reconsider implementing this uh, simple language using our modular external visitors. We use this interface, which captures the uh, E using an additional type parameter, uh, type parameter R, and we introduce another method, visit exp, that turns an R into E. Okay, so now, the evaluation keeps the R abstract and control the recursion over the sub-expression using the visit exp call. So now we use a slightly different syntax with uh, Java 8 using uh, default methods. We keep the visit exp method abstract. So now when we want to extend it with subtraction and if expressions, we can do similar thing in a modular way, like this, we can extend uh, a evolve in the extended evaluation operation. Sorry. And control the recursion using the visit exp call. Okay. So, as may, you may have noticed that we are using interfaces in implementing this uh, operations, we need to have a, a hierarchy that represents 
uh, elements and concrete elements, such as the, uh, the hierarchy for the initial language. And we implement this visit exp using the accept call provided by the element interface. And we composing the abstract evaluation with the concrete visitor that implements this visit exp and compose them together to form a class. And then we can construct an expression and evaluate it. But we need a similar infrastructure for the extend, extended visitor. And it includes the classes for the uh, literals and additions. So this is bad because we have to write a lot of boilerplate code. So to summarize on these three styles, uh, object bus has modular visitors and modular AST because it doesn't have uh, AST in the first place. So it, uh, it also not support traversal control and for internal visitors, the AST is not modular. For external visitors, uh, the, we can control the traversal and for our modular external visitors, we have uh, modular visitors as well as traversal control but no modular AST. Fun uh, fortunately, this modular AST can be generated, although they are not, uh, so they are mechanical. This is exactly what our EVF framework does. So it is indeed an annotation processor that generates boilerplate code associated to the new style of, uh, of modular external visitors. It generates AST infrastructure and several traversal templates generalizing on the uh, SHI framework proposed in Uppsala 2015. And the usage is simply just annotating your object address with this at visitor annotation. So to give an overview of the framework, let's model a simple uh, language based on untyped lambda calculus. The left-hand side is the abstract syntax. This is how we model it using object algebra interface and we annotate it with an add visitor. And inside a modern ID like Eclipse, once you save it, you will generate a lot of code associated to it, such as the uh, modular internal visitor interface. So you do not need to directly write down something like this. It's much more complicated than object algebra interface. So the first operation on the free variables, which is a query which turns an expression to a set of string. The first two cases are interesting cases because it, uh, for a, a variable, it returns a singleton set. For an abstraction, it collects the free variable set from the body and excludes the variable x. And for the other three, it just go to the recursion on the body and for a um, leaf, like literals, it returns an empty set. This is how we use our framework to implement this operation. It extends a uh, traversal template called uh, query. This, this is a, what the generated code looks like. It uses a monoid instance to implement each case. A monoid instance defines two methods, empty and join. Empty provides a default value and join combines two values to form uh, the result. So with this template, we only need to implement the two interesting cases, var and abstraction. We have to supply a monoid instance. In this case, it's a, it is a set monoid. So the set monoid defines the empty using an empty set and join with a union of two sets. And this is uh, free variables. So the other operation is capture avoiding substitution. It's quite subtle to define such a uh, operation because it uh, uses a flexible traversal strategy on, over the expression. So you, ca you can have a look at the, the second case, which is abstraction. So it traverses the body only when the variable y is not x and and why it's not a free variable set of, uh, it's not a member of free variable set of S. So this is how we model it using our framework. We use another traversal template 
called tra transform, which uh, recursively computes the uh, re applying itself to the sub-expressions and reconstruct using uh, abstract factory, ELG. And we can declare dependencies using an abstract method and use the dependency in this way. And we can flexibly traverse the body according to the condition. So we can either traverse it using visit exp or not. And we need to in instantiate these interfaces into classes. So we have this uh, generated Lambda Elge visitor, which implements the visit X method. We compose them together to form a class, and we use the uh, instantiated free variables to implement FV method. And we use the generated concrete factory to implement the abstract factory. So this is the client code which constructs a, a, a application of variable X to an identity function y to y. And the result is, uh, a, for a free variable, it is a singleton set x. And for substitution, it replaces the x variable to 1. We also implemented this uh, language using two other approaches, the visitor pattern and object algebras. So the comparison is shown in this table. The result shows that our approach is both modular and uses the least number of code and this number of cases. And have, we have this uh, untyped lambda calculus implemented. We can reuse them as a component. So this is how we do this. We can extend it with two new uh, language constructs, Booleans and if expressions. We can easily support free variables and substitution like this. We just reuse the existing operations and compose it with a newly generated traversal template and form the definition. So it reduces the implementation effort by uh, the extensibility offered by the uh, modular external visitors and also the generated traversal templates. It also reduces the knowledge because we can hide the technical details into the library. To further illustrate the applicability of our approach, we did a case study which refactors a large number of non-modular interpreters from the types and programming languages book. So as you can see, uh, this is the overview of the packages so there are a lot of it, uh, connections between packages. So it's, the book starts from an untyped, uh, untyped language with only uh, arithmetic constructs, and it gradually adds new features such as lambda calculus, uh, exception, records, something like that. And it, forms this, it combines these features to form several intermediate languages. But originally, the implementation uh, written in OCaml, just copy and paste the code. But with this modularity mechanism provided our framework, we can modularly define these uh, features. And this, we further extracted the conceptually independent features into a uh, circle. So this circle are the packages we extracted for promoting reuse. And we can see the whole uh, structure, the lower is the uh, smaller languages and the, the higher are the um, larger languages. So this, we evaluate the number of uh, the source lines of code according to uh, package-wise comparison and component uh, perspective. So the reduction is average, on average 44%. And for feature-rich language like um, for a simple, the reduction can be up to 88%. So from another perspective, the reduction is uh, similar. Okay. So there's uh, some related work. I think I do not have enough time to discuss them. And uh, 
To summarize, we have presented and modular external with their encoding, and it allows uh, modular dependencies to be expressed, and it works in Java-like languages. It provides flexible traversal strategies, and it gen we generate boilerplate code uh, for this uh, modular external visitors, and the uh, evaluated artifacts are available online. So I have one minute, so I can give a short demo. So, if we can annotate it, let's add visitor. And by saving it, we can generate code. Yeah, something like this. Sorry, I have a problem. Uh, so that's it. <laughs> so I have a problem turning around. So, so uh, any questions? Uh, there is definitely a certain beauty to the uh, uh, to the solution, and there is no doubt that it's uh, much more concise and uh, much more readable and composable and whatnot. So I'm almost sorry to ask the the, the mean question. So uh, how bad is the performance? Well, I have a backup slides for it. So it's double the time compared to imperative visitors, and it's slightly slower than functional visitors, but it uh, outperforms the runabout, which is another uh, sophisticated cogeneration mechanism based on walkabout. So this is the uh, very simple. Double is not bad. Yeah. So this is evaluated actually by one of our reviewers, so he uh, conducted a more, uh, a more uh, accurate uh, measurement on the performance with JMH. So, yeah, thank you. I'm not sure if I understood correctly. Uh, the order of traverse, is it encoded in the default implementations of the interface for visitor uh, the order of traverse, like if you have uh, addition, go, you go first to the left, to the right, something like that. Um, where is it? Uh, is it encoded every time I write to a particular visitor, or there is some default order in the generic implementation of the visitor? So you can see the, such as this. So it encodes the, the traversal strategy, but you can override it, right? Okay, so in particular visitor, I can change that. Yes, to so override, overriding the methods. Yeah, and the second question, is there any problems if uh, during transformation I want to remove nodes or add nodes, like if I do some syntactic sugar, something like that? Uh, um, you can add nodes. Oh, we have uh, illustrated by extending it, right? But for removing, I think it's not possible for now, yeah. or for Java, I don't know. No, I mean, in a particular abstract syntax tree, mm -hmm. uh, 
is it easy to write a visitor which can remove some nodes from it or make some bigger transformation? Uh, yes, you can. You can use the this, uh, template by uh, calling Elge with only a subset of the constructs, right? Oh, okay, thanks. Thank you.